Hi guys, welcome once again to Gaz Labs, and today we're going to be looking at the Mini VNA Tiny. And this is a really, really sensitive um, antenna analyzer um, and uh, VNA analyzer from um, Mini Radio Solutions. Now, I've had this for a very long time, and um, it's my pretty much my go to, to unit. Um, so, let's crack on and have a quick look um, just to see how it is you install this and, and uh, get it to run. So, um, yeah, let's crack on with it. So, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the to the um, MRS website. And this will give you um, quite a lot of um, information. You can download the, the forum. You, know, you can go to the forum, download the manual, um, update, you know, firmware updates, get news, all that sort of stuff. All on this this web page, absolutely fantastic, quite well laid out. Um, it does get a little convoluted here and there when you start downloading the software. And so we're going to go through that now. So first of all, is you're going to need to follow this link here, to the VNA Java file. Now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be downloading a, a Java self-executable file. So we're going to need a couple of uh, bits and pieces. We're going to need to install Java. We're going to need to, to obviously download this file and, and run it. Again, the user guide is here um, for the for the software um, and everything you need is, is here. So and we're going to follow this link here to the Java library. We're going to follow this one here. We're going to go along to the 3.19 and we're going to get from there. Is it going to go? Uh, index of. Now then, what this will do is take us to this page here and there's a list of files here. We're only interested in this one, the Vinny, uh, sorry, the VNAJ 3.119 and download. Okay, and put that on your desktop. Just tuck it out of the way. Now, the other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to install um, Java. Now, I always use java.com, okay, it's, you know, you, you want to try and, when you're dealing with all these sort of things, there's, there's an element of risk, you know, so you you want to make sure that you go to to, to safe websites and, um, you know, all that sort of good stuff. So please follow links from MRS and always go direct to, to you know, Java or wherever you're going to get it from. And you just agree, start free download and away you go. Now, I've already done it. I've already installed it. Um, it's very easy. Just to just follow the instructions. Job done. Now, once you've done that, the self-executable Java file will sit on your desktop. Okay. And all I've done here is I've just plugged in my Vinny VNA um, Tiny. You don't need any Windows drivers. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Once this actually installs, it will associate it with a, a COM port. In my case, it's COM3. And you're just going to run the file. Now, the first thing it's going to do is grumble that there's no calibration data. Just say OK. And we're going to now have to create some calibration data. Um, so to do that, first thing we need to do is go to the analyzer and we're going to go to setup and we're going to tell the software that it's using a mini VNA tiny and it's going to be using COM3. And we're just going to run a simple test and this should go green if it's found it. Da right okay and then we're just going to say update and it says oh, there's no calibration data well we know that we're just say okay we're then going to go to the calibration port click on that and we're going to say that we're going to create a calibration set now you're going to need a calibration kit now a calibration kit consists of three sma nuts one of them is an open uh, nut the other one is a dead short and the other one is a 50 ohm load. Now we're going to start with the with the first one. Now we're going to be using there are there are two ports on here. One is essentially transmit, and one is essentially receive. Now the DUT is transmit, and the DET is receive. We're going to be dealing with the DUT port. And the first thing that we're going to do is install the um, the open port, and we're going to put that on the DUT port. And we're just going to run. The file now what we're actually looking for here is a pretty much a sideways Christmas tree in our little waveforms and this takes about 30 seconds to run um, 
take this opportunity really just to say if you like if you dislike this video please do so um, and if you want to see more videos like this one please subscribe because there's going to be loads of those more coming up over the next year um, I've got lots and lots of things to to, to tinker with uh, over the next uh, probably six or so months so um, looking forward to getting stuck into one or two of those Okay, that's pretty much done, and it should say okay. Dana, right there you go. So now you've got your sideways Christmas tree, two waveforms. Now we're going to move along to the next one, and it's the read the dead short. And you're going to take the other, the second nut in the calibration kit, and we're going to say read. And again, it should take about thirty seconds, and it will read through the. Uh, it's a little test sequence. So there is another version, as I say, that of this, which will give you, I think it will go from um, pretty much HF right the way through to VHF. That one, I think, has um, Bluetooth and it has a built-in battery um, as well, which you can um, enable, charge, and then the actual unit itself is fairly sort of uh, standalone, but there is a restriction in the in the frequency. Okay, that's the next one done. The next one we're going to need is a load. Okay, and again, we've got our little, our funny little Christmas tree. Now, this one may look a little different because obviously it's uh, it's not so hard. It's it's a it's a it's a load, and we're going to say read it again it should only take about 30 or so seconds when we are actually done this we're going to ask to save the um the the calibration because um because we're running this file independently we're not actually installing anything so there may be it, it will keep asking you to calibrate this every time you use it and we don't want to keep doing that it's really dull um, life's far too short so what we're going to do is we're going to save it and once this is done there you go pretty much done okay so now the save is actually illuminated and I'm just going to say save and it's now coming up and asking me what I want to call it um, and I'm going to call this I'm going to just put in, there you go, Gary, Gary Cal, and you just say save. Right. Now, at this point, we can then say update, and the box goes away, and that pretty much is it done. And it's telling us what we're, what we're using down here as our calibration. It's giving us the temperature of the unit. Um, and pretty much that's done now all i've got on the dut port here is a dummy load okay and i'm just gonna i'm gonna run a test here through from i mean i've saved a couple here i mean it, if you if you want to you can actually save that if you come down here to this plus you can put in the frequencies at the top here and then you can say save it and you can see that it's saved that that data now then what we need to do here is we're going to, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested in uh, the SWR um, and Z. So I've just made the SWR green, the Z um, blue. And you can change that up here with the different colors. You can configure the, the color settings. Um, I've left it on auto scale. I'm not going to get really, really sort of, um, we're not going to go into all the detail. I'm sure there's people out there that can tell me how to use this. <laughs> A lot more than I can so what we're going to do is we're going to run this once there you go and it will whiz through the little thing and here we're actually testing from one megs right the way through to three gig and now you can see that we've test we've actually run a little test on our dummy load and you can see that it's basically 50 ohms pretty pretty much right the way through the range and the SWR is no more than one one point one to one it's not it's just not anymore so that's really good um and that pretty much is the very very basics of it again if you want to you can 
click on these and actually set them up um, again um, you can set you know you can click on any part of this and actually get the the, the printout from the on, on the bottom you can also send this out to different um, different software programs get the information of the driver you can display a Smith's chart of the actual um, SWR and you can see we're pretty much bang in the middle you can get reference data um, now this doesn't actually have a battery in it it's saying there's six volts and it should give us the temperature of the unit um, and you can also do some other things as well you can actually calculate you can actually do things like resistor networks as well it will give you um, pad a, a, a resistor pad calculator so you can set up a resistor pad um, and it will also calculate the length of coax for you as well so you can put a piece of coax on put a dummy load on one end and actually then then measure um, the, the coax basically choose from a drop down list or if it's not there then you can actually create your own um, velocity factor and all, all that sort of stuff and, and, and do that so you can see this is a fairly powerful piece of software and again there are other pieces of software out there that, that people are using um, you don't potentially you don't you don't have to use this particular piece of kit and um, there are lots and lots of pieces of software out there that that people write for these things and there are variations on this same program so i think if i remember rightly it was on a yahoo group um but certainly join the forum um and certainly join the, the yahoo group for these because um, there's so much good information dotted around and people are making modifications to these and putting add-ons and doing all sorts of things and they're a very very powerful um, piece of kit my my only word of warning with all this sort of stuff with any with any um, sensitive piece of kit is number one make sure that you discharge your antenna system it's very important that you discharge your antenna system um, and secondly um, you know obviously because it, it build up with static potentially and um, that will destroy the unit um, the other one is once you've actually got an antenna system on here um, then the the actual box itself is vulnerable to RF. It's very important that you make sure there is no RF um, any in anywhere near this that that will um, you know that is potentially going to damage the unit. So just make sure that no one's transmitting nearby. That pretty much is it um, for the for the moment. I think um, again, please feel free to subscribe um, and again like dislike whatever um and as i say keep there's plenty more coming out in the near future so have fun enjoy playing uh, ham radio and i'll see you next time